What's up, guys and gals of the movement world? It's Sean Mishka, the Movement Miyagi, coming to you again on behalf of Football Beyond the Stats and our Movement Play of the Week this week for Week 8 of the 2023 National Football League season. And this week, we're going to see a player that I dove into a couple of years back before the NFL draft. Reese Hall, running back of the New York Jets, then of the Iowa State Cyclones, where I dove into his movement form of life how it is that he saw the world or how it is that he sees the world, but realized that coming off of an ACL early in uh, last year's season, this player that we're about to see here today standing in front of us, that is currently near the top of the list when it comes to the NFL rushing leaders in this 2023 campaign, this player, this mover, is a whole lot different than that one that we looked at a year and a half, two years ago, leading up to the 2023 NFL draft. The reason is, is coming off of the ACL, it has forced him to see the world and behave and act within the world in a totally different fashion. And we're about to see where it actually may have improved his maturity, his attunement, his sensitivity to the specifying information sources as well as then how it is that he acts in the world. We see a new patient uh, player that is under a tremendous amount of movement ownership. So let's go ahead and get into this play back here again, week eight in New Jersey, uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey, the home of the New York Giants, but also of the New York Jets. So even though the Jets end up being the away team here, um, they are both playing at their home stadium. So we see Brees Hall on this short dump off pass um, over the middle. And then he, in his own unique and specific way, finds this really functional and behavioral fit to this problem. Now, let's not get it twisted. Let's get it right out of the way. The elephant in the room, the Giants defense on this respective play and their tackling skill and capabilities, or maybe their effort was absolutely horrible. But that being said, we don't want to let that take away from that which what Brees Hall did. Now, granted, it's always this problem-solution dynamics, these changing states of organization on both sides of the relationship. So we can't separate the two from one another. We can't separate the level of the problem, its complexity and its intensity, or maybe they're the effort from the 11 guys in blue. From that, which what Brees Hall does in the movement solution that he coordinates, controls, and organizes, we're going to get into that as we always do. But again, let's not miss the forest through the trees here. This is a new Brees Hall. This is an evolved Brees Hall, and it's one that I'm excited about. It's not that I wasn't excited about what his movement skill was back when he entered the NFL in 2022, he was just a different type of mover. I remember comparing he and Kenneth Walker from Michigan State University, now the Seattle Seahawks. And I kind of talked about how Walker was able to solve these problems in this really successive fashion. So he was really connected, really attuned to what was in front of him but also what lied beyond or outside of that immediate local movement problem. We're starting to see this type of maturity from Brees Hall now as well, which we did not see as much from him at Iowa State when he was a little bit more reliant on the gas pedal and the explosiveness in the physical qualities and characteristics nearly to the same degree it is what we see him now. And again, sometimes we see this from players. We saw it here in Minnesota with the Vikings, with Dalvin Cook, who is now Brees Hall's teammate at the New York Jets. When he tore his ACL, we talked about a guy who was running like his hair was on fire at all times, always on and in the gas pedal, working through the gears as quickly as he could to hit emerging gaps before they decayed or before they closed. That's sort of who Brees Hall was before. Now, post-ACL, He's had to become more intentional, more open and responsive to a rich landscape of affordances. And we see him perceiving, we see him scanning, we see him taking in more of these layers of the movement problem. We also see him acting in a way that allows him to connect to this unfolding problem and to couple his movement behaviors in close relation to it. Let's get into that here at 50% speed. 
So again, I, I talked about him uh, being able to uh, really hit the gas pedal. He did have the capability back at Iowa State and then early in his rookie season last year, as well as then now, especially this year, to make guys miss, particularly in a phone booth or when he would be in a lot of open space and he could work through different changes in, in tempo, uh, changes in tempo or rhythm, meaning changes in his cadence, how fast he was moving, working to deceive or acting to deceive, and then catching how players were moving. But now we're seeing him actually square guys up more frequently. Again, this was a horrible effort from 58 um, for, for the Giants. But also, um, even though I paused it at a weird spot there where we can barely see Brees Hall, I do want to make the mention it was raining in this surface at MetLife Stadium here, uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey, the home of the Giants and the Jets does get really, really slick. It's not the greatest turf or surface in the world. And we see this not only from 58, but also then from 41 as well. And then we see that change the way that the defenders are actually moving. Brees Hall is putting them on skates, but the surface itself is not really a, a affording great surface foot connection. So these players, where they don't know where it is that they're going to go, and Brees Hall does know where he wants to go, and he's got a bunch of two-way goes here. And let me just get my telestrator out here, if I could, just uh, briefly. What we see from him is really this this capability of this meta stable region here when he squares guys up getting to that point or place where he's taking in the information he's he's allowing that player to come into his bubble and once he realizes that 58 has committed with this right foot forward and really with this capability of going in this direction right um we we see this it's very much com he's very much committed to going that way and we see Brees Hall taking in that information about him he makes this decision and makes it uh really really uh I guess I, I want to say I don't want to say easily I should just say accurately and and without hesitation right and, and so once he knows where 58 is going he just throws this right foot into the ground and moves on to the next local movement problem. Now, again, 58 didn't really adapt alongside of him, but if it were to have been, and we'll talk about this a little bit more momentarily when we, when we discuss how we might be able to set up movement problems in a practice or a learning environment that would facilitate this type of behavior, okay? But what we see from him if this guy, and him being Brees Hall, if this guy here, and I'm trying to, I will say, just going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag here. Uh, Zoom changed all their their telegraphic um, qualities, I guess I would say, uh, their tools in the toolbox. They've moved it to a different side and they changed the the, <laughs> the drawings for it. So I'm kind of working on the fly here through it. But if 58 were to move from right his right to left and move into Brees Hall's right lane here, Brees Hall had given himself enough space to be able to move right or left for himself personally, which is exactly what a running back wants to do, of course, when they square a guy up in this, in this type of scenario. So again, not to beat a dead horse, but this is an easy way to saw up uh, to train this right to have two guys starting at this type of interpersonal distance and i'm gonna just go ahead and mention this right here right now this type of interpersonal distance that might lie between these two again you can tell um, i'm all over the place with my drawing here just simply because they really went and messed with my chi um by by screwing with my my drawing tools but in, in any event, I'm going to do the best that I can here and, and adapt accordingly. But watch again, once he knows he's past him, he can feel kinesthetically and from a proprioceptive standpoint to his left, he being Brees Hall, can feel 58 is right there and no longer presents a threat. And he moves on 
to the next local movement problem in a hurry. And, and he knows that in a, on an NFL football field, problems change and change really dynamically, really quickly, really rapidly, right? And that goes without saying. That should be pretty intuitively obvious. But you can tell now where he used to be about hitting the gas pedal and trying to run past someone and sometimes even through or into someone. Now he actually moves with a much different patience and a much different ownership uh, type of speed as well as manner. We see that from him here as he moves in relation to 41 Micah McFadden. And he actually starts to move from left to right as he drew McFadden in. Okay. He sees him come in to the point where he 41 is committed to being on this path right here. And Brees Hall moves from left to right or from east to west, as opposed to north and south, before he moves and turns on this corner when he's gotten past the threat of McFadden. It may seem subtle. And it is subtle to a certain degree, but the old Brees Hall probably would have tried to hit the gas pedal and do something to where the defender would get up in his grill a little bit too much. And now he actually just moves in this highly adaptive way before, again, local movement problem to local movement problem. And we can see perceptual sensitivity to look to and through, to look for and beyond. We're about to see that from him. And we're also about to see him actually setting things up to work or solve this problem in a highly successive way. Okay. So let's move on here. We see he actually turns his head from right to left. You can see him looking here again. Don't want to beat the dead horse, but you see him actually look to scan. Very, very rarely saw that from him, especially in chaos at Iowa State. But now, more attunement, more sensitivity. What does that mean? A perceptual connection to the specifying information about the problem and the opportunities to act in that problem. I don't want you guys to miss this because this is actual... This is actually a lot of evolution in Brees Hall's craft. Good stuff. Left to right, right to left with the eyes. And look at how it changes the movement behaviors. Not on the gas pedal. He actually tempers the storm a little bit, pulls back on the gas pedal to let 87 get out in front of him. I know I keep going back and forth, back and forth here, but don't want to miss this. We can train this guys and gals in a lot of different ways. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that too. You can see the movement problem gets awfully complex really quickly. What do I mean by increasing complexity? Numerous interacting component parts, more defenders in the space or more obstacles, i.e. a teammate. So this quickly turns into, as you can see, right? We got one, two, three, four, five giant defenders, as well as a chaser from behind. And Brees himself has 87 a blocker, and the rest of the problem is his to solve. This got to be an awfully complex movement problem, regardless of how poor the tackling attempts and efforts are from the New York Giants here. Okay, so again, Let's really see this for what it is. He changes his behaviors, starts to move in a way to give himself more time, more space, as well as give his blocker, his teammate, his buddy, an opportunity to select one of these dudes to block. And Brees then just takes that and uses it accordingly. And what a really piss poor effort from Xavier McKinney here, safety, who's usually a very very sure tackler um, at the safety position, number 29 for the Giants. And he kind of sort of gets blocked right here by 87, uh, who I think is, um, who the heck is that? Azuma. Um, 
and you can see Garrett Wilson just kind of gets in, in the mix too at the very end. Um, as does, uh, I think 82 is Gibson and you can see Brees just stays awfully sensitive, awfully attuned to the very end of this play. And with that attunement and with that sensitivity, guys and gals, we also see adaptability. Okay. Just like abundance precedes adaptability. So does attunement. So does sensitivity because it begins to tell us what opportunities are there and what information becomes awfully relevant to us. I want to point out a few things here. Once he gets and skirts through this lane. Now, again, he could have gone any number of directions here, remembering that no two problems are ever the same, neither are any two solutions. He's keeping himself open and responsive to potential ways of moving. Okay. Especially when you have abundance in your skill set and you are staying connected to this unfolding problem. You stay more responsive, more flexible, more adjustable to just move and go with the flow to solve the problem and find a behavioral fit to actually interact with the what is, right? We've talked about that before. But with Brees now, not always running like his hair's on fire and he's, he's moving in this really uh, ownership speed where he has autonomy He's able to just connect to what is there. He's able to just move and go with the flow. You can tell he's never really fully on the gas pedal and he's able to just skirt through here. As he skirts through that lane, we then see him again, look from right to left. We see him give a glance right there. He looks back out in front of him and again, back over to his left and a few more times. Now, some of that is just getting an update to ensure that there aren't any chasers that are going to catch up to him. Some of that probably is this preparing himself for this celebratory uh, expression, this honest, authentic celebratory expression of who he is and, and everything that he has gone through over this last year, ACL injury, and now getting back to being one of the most evolved uh, running backs in the entire game, uh, the most evolved movers in the entire game. And you can see the elation on his face as he does that too, and rightfully so. Makes the first guy miss, does this little curve linear subtle action to make the second guy miss, gets a guy in space, becomes connected to the shared affordances. That complex movement problem is presented to him at that point, and he just finds a way to go solve it so a few things here okay a, a few things as we really dive into this because i think they're going to give us a different view this view obviously much pulled back we're zooming out we're able to see some cool things from this angle as well remember as a sport movement skill acquisition specialist somebody who's analyzing the movement behavior and trying to explain that which what is happening the more angles we can get, especially if we're going to try to put ourselves into the human movement system, into the perceptions, into the intentions, and into the actions of the player, the more views we get, the better off we're going to be to be able to elaborate upon this. Again, let's remember, interpersonal distance, huge specifying informational variable that the more skilled running backs are at least going to become connected to. In certain interpersonal distance, certain opportunities are afforded oneself, right? Depending on your action capabilities. And we'll get back into this in a bit when we talk about this. But again, we can see some of the same things that we were just talking about, just how unique this movement problem is and how complex it gets in a very short period of time. You can see the rain falling down. Let's not, re let's not forget the constraints will all collace. And before I get too far ahead, let's watch that from that view one more time as I'm speaking over it. The constraints are going to collace. Dexterity is about the ability to solve any emerging movement problem in any situation, meaning any type of problem, and in any condition, weather conditions, surface, uh, game time, so on and so forth, right? 
dexterity, according to Nick Gladbernstein, that highest expression of one's movement skill across situations and conditions. And we saw a variety of situations here for Brees Hall, that 1v1 in a short space to then moving into that more curvilinear uh, in a little greater interpersonal distance with Michael McFadden coming downhill, to then moving in a way where it's a 2v4 or 5, again, depending on how we count that chaser into the mix and how much Brees Hall can feel that. All of those types of things are different situations. And then we have the difference in conditions. The rain, the surface, the game time, okay? But again, let's look at the perceptual sensitivity. Let's look at the attunement. And let's look at the constant scanning, the constant detection and gathering of information. And Brees Hall obviously deserves the right to celebrate and to celebrate uh, pretty hard in the way that he did there. A couple things that I want to make the mention to, especially when we talk about what this type of analysis might mean for us if we are sport movement and skill acquisition specialists, meaning if we are armed with the opportunity to be able to set movement problems for players of any level, okay? 1v1 interactions, really easy way to start this. And we do this a lot in our learning environment. We'll have a 1v1 or maybe a 1v2 as we see Brees Hall with 58 and 41 as I'm circling them. We might do it in this exact same way, guys and gals, giving a, a short dump off pass uh, from a quarterback right to the middle of the field and them not knowing, if I could get this one step ahead, them not knowing where this player is, this immediate defender is, they might be coming straight downhill from anywhere from usually about three to let's call it 10 yards away. When that player turns and catches the ball, they have to connect to where the defender, the immediate defender is, and then we might have a secondary defender entering that space also. So we might have, um, I'm trying to look for the circle here. I can't find it, of course, uh, being that they they mess with my chi, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, here's one guy, and here's the second guy, right? As we can obviously tell that. And as we look into um, how we might set this movement problem, we might do it so it is uh, anywhere from probably 10 to 15 yards deep or long, and then usually 8 to 15 yards-ish wide. So this player who catches the ball in the middle of the field, this player being the Brees Hall or ball carrier at the starting line, would have the opportunity to navigate this space in whichever way he wants to go, depending on where these defenders are when he turns around. It's a really easy activity that we can use in our learning environment. We do. But I would recommend that people in indie drills at the NFL college high school level would use this type of activity as well. Quick, easy dump off pass to a running back. A coach could throw it. A fellow player could throw it or the like. And one or two defenders entering that space or being present in the space that this offensive player will have to make miss. And what we would do is change those situations. So again, no two problems are ever the same. So neither are any two solutions. A easy activity design here that will pay dividends to a player being able to solve the movement problems in a phone booth sometimes, like we see here with Brees Hall and number 58, or like what we would see with 41 entering the mix. 1v1, 1v2, and the situations are changing. Pretty simple, easy way. Then what we would do here is a similar type of movement problem again to what we see unfolding. Excuse me. And we would practice this in a representative way. Also, uh, the running back starting, let me just draw this out for you. If I could, um, we might have a, a certain uh, width or tunnel 
usually, again, this is probably going to be in the 15 or 20 yards length and probably a little wider than what we see um, being drawn right here. But this player could get the ball in any number of ways. They could be just running with the ball to begin with, already carrying the ball. They could be moving from uh, left to right into the space, catching a, a cr little crossing route or, or pass, and then entering the space, and then having the teammate um, usually it's going to be um, a guy coming from outside of the space, as we see here with 87. Um, and then what we would have is defenders entering this space too, usually one from an angle or from behind, maybe as we see number five here, where there's immediately going to be a chaser. So it could be a 2v2 type of scenario or situation. It could easily be, as we're about to find it be for Brees Hall, it could be uh, where this guy enters the space with the blocker in front of him, like as they're crossing from the 45 to the 40, with numerous defenders crashing into the space. Um, quite honestly, it usually wouldn't be this many guys. Um, you know, here we're seeing a number of guys entering this space. Sorry for the not being as quick on the mouse or on the telestrator as I normally would be. Okay. And this blocker would have the choice as to which guy to go block where he's going to go. And the offensive player in this case, Brees Hall is going to be guided and have his attention educated where he's going to attempt to look from blocker to defender and then try to manage the multiple defenders at the same time so he's got to juggle various information sources simultaneously and we obviously see Brees Hall do that here with a high amount of skill and attunement but we would easily be able to train this from my experience and we see it happen over and over and over again. So really cool stuff that we got from Brees Hall here in week eight of the 2023 NFL season. Again, I talked about Brees Hall's form of life. Go back and watch that video from pre 2022 NFL draft. And I get into a whole heck of a lot more as to who Brees Hall is and what his movement skills about. But let's not miss the force through the trees here. Post ACL, who he is and how it is that he's behaving. I think we'll only see the tip of the iceberg for Brees Hall and who it is that he's about to be ultimately in the long term. So for Sean Mishka, the Movement Miyagi, uh, this is week eight of Football Beyond the Stats, our Movement Player of the Week. I'll see you guys next time.